Welcome to the Walsh Literacy Initiative's Rita Palooza. This session features Dr. Mary Dahlgren. Hi, my name is Mary Dahlgren and I'm the president of Tools for Reading. I'm a national literacy consultant. I do lots of trainings all over the United States for letters, language essentials for teachers of reading and spelling. And uh, that's thanks to all of my work I've been able to do with Dr. Louisa Motes over the last 16 years. I am going to talk to you today uh, a little bit about the vowel sounds in our English language. I'm sure you're probably wondering what is this arrangement on the wall behind me here my little magnetic board and that's the arrangement of the vowel sounds in our language so you probably think when we think of you probably it probably comes to mind vowels a e i o u and sometimes y we think of the letter names but we don't often think about the sounds that are represented when we and and we have 18 vowel sounds in the english language so this arrangement is showing you the vowel sounds as uh, by the opening of the mouth. So first I want to try, I want to work on that with you and just go through the 18 vowel sounds in the English language. And then I'll explain to you a little bit more about the arrangement. First of all, we'll probably begin to get insight into this arrangement. If you hold your hand underneath your chin and you say these sounds, and this is exactly what I have uh, kindergarten and first graders do. Um, we're going to start with that E sound, as in cheese. That's your most closed sound. There's air flowing through your mouth, uh, around your teeth, but there's not, there's an, enough of an opening so there's no blockage of air. This E sound is voiced, E, and if you, can't feel that voicing e you can put your hands over your ears and say e and there should you feel you should feel some resonating in your ears as you as you do that that's that voicing we have voiced and unvoiced sounds all of our vowel sounds are voiced you have to have a, every syllable has to have a vowel sound because it has to have a voice a syllable cannot be with just a consonant um, and it. it has to have a vowel. A syllable could be a single vowel, but it can't be a single consonant. So that's some insight about the vowel sounds of our language. So we start with, again, the tight smile, E, then we begin to open our mouth slightly. E, I, A, E, A, I, A. Did you see how my mouth dropped down? E, I, A, E, A, I, A. That's that doctor sound, ah. That's that what we consider the most open sound. And then we have ah, uh, a, uh, o, u, uh, oo, and u. We'll also notice over here, I have two sounds we call our diphthong sounds. Diphthongs are two movements of the mouth, two. So the di in diphthong is means two. It's the same prefix as in Digraph, it's that Greek prefix meaning to. So diphthong, oi and ow. Those are what we classify as our two diphthong sounds on our, on our vowel chart. These are a little bit elusive for children because um, they feel like with that two movements there might be more than one sound. They are spelled with more than one letter. So that makes it pretty easy for students to begin to learn oi, oi or oy, and the owl sound, O-U or O-W. So those are things to, to think about. Why am I teaching you about all these sounds? How come I'm not just teaching you the print? Because when we talk about learning to read and learning to spell, learning to write, even in our spoken language, if I know the sounds, I, I go from speech to print. I learn to speak first and then I learn how to read. Um, we can be aware of sounds without ever knowing how to spell them or read with them. I want you to think about English language learners. What if they come into your classrooms and they are totally unaware of the sounds in our language? Well, most of us don't just go through an inventory of speech sounds without some type of prompting. So this is your opportunity to learn about the sounds, the vowel sounds in the English language and why sometimes it's so difficult for many of our students to learn them or to learn 
to spell and read and write in the English language because we have all these sounds, but nobody's ever made it transparent for them. We're clarifying here, what are the vowel sounds in the language, noticing those sounds, and then once I start teaching in kindergarten, short vowel sounds, for example, I teach the if sound, I start talking about the spelling of that sound. But I'm also in kindergarten, oftentimes, I've covered up some misspellings here, you're going to see in kindergarten, I'm gonna to learn to word, read a word like me, or she, or he. I begin to notice that E has, uh, that, that those words have a, that vowel E, and it gets to say its name. We call those open syllables. So I'm going to start talking about those things with students as they're learning to read and write. This is the sound. Here's the choice for spelling that sound. As my students become um, more advanced, moving into first grade, they learn about EE -E, that spells the E sound. They'll learn about EA, spells the E sound as an eagle. And they'll be even eventually learn E consonant E as an athlete or concrete. And then we have Y, oh my gosh, another spelling for E. And that's in baby or candy, you hear that um, that Y at the end of a word says, at the end of a two syllable word has the E sound. Oh my gosh, that's a lot of information to think about. But think about this. If I teach my students just the print and I don't ever connect it to sound, that's a lot of information to have to store in random bits. But what if I know the sounds and then I can say, what are my choices for spelling that sound? I have a better, much better chance of beginning to understand the organization of the language. So I'm thinking, I think about sounds and the vowel sounds, how, you're, how I'm presenting them to you right now. It's, it's creating a template for instructional purposes, uh, that ability to store that information in a systematic way so that then I can begin to add the print to those sounds. So again, I want to go through one more time how this, uh, this, these are arranged, and then I'll talk about this odd sound. We have one more time with me. You guys try it. E, I, A, E, A, I, A. Now we have our most open sound, ah, ah. I could spend a lot of time talking about those two, but I won't go there today. Ah, 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 o, uh, u, u. Oi and ow. Talked about those two diphthongs. And then we have our three vowel R's the er, the r, er, r, and or. Our, our vowel R's. And I put those on the chart because I, I said I'm a, a letters trainer in letters. We teach these, the vowel and consonant charts. We explain those, um, these sounds in the language, and we begin to understand that um, these are our controlled vowels, and that's a sound I have to learn. It's another sound in the English language. But I really want to spend my last couple of minutes talking to you about schwa. So you see this lovely upside down E, this very elusive sound in the English language. It typically says a uh, as in banana, or it says I as in surface. And um, I can use any of the five vowel letters to spell the schwa sound. Okay, that's tricky. What are we talking about here? So we have what we typically think of as long and short sounds. We also have our diphthong sounds and we have our vowel R sounds. But there's this other thing that happens that's called schwa. It's not long, it's not short, but we have to flex the sound. So sometimes when I encounter a word like banana, it's not banana, it's banana. So what's that, that first A in banana? We have the a uh sound. That's not, that's unexpected. I would expect the A to say a uh or a, but in banana, it's an unaccented syllable. The schwa occurs in an unaccented syllable. The word palace, so the second syllable in palace is an unaccented syllable. It's de-emphasized and 
I could spend a lot of time talking to you about accent, emphasis. Your mouth opens a little wider in an accented syllable. You say the vowel sound a little louder, but schwa, the schwa sound, it just goes uh. The vowel sound makes an unexpected sound. It's just uh or i. Uh. It doesn't do what you want it to do. And I have to teach children that right away because they begin reading words like wagon, lemon, um, husband. There's many different words there, and they're two syllable words that's, that have the schwa sound in them. So I need to make our students aware of that. I will tell you the schwa is the most common vowel sound in the English language because in, in American English especially, we tend to minimize our vowel sounds and the syllables and oftentimes we even um, drop off those, we drop off endings as, as you all well know and um, we oftentimes don't emphasize syllables. So lots of words have that schwa sound in them which makes it very challenging for reading and spelling. Okay, one more thing I want to say about vowel sounds. We have 18 vowel sounds in the English language, and I'm an English language learner. You want me to um, learn how to read and spell in English, but let's say I'm a Spanish speaker. As a Spanish speaker, I have five vowel sounds. The five vowel sounds in Spanish are E, the E, eh, the A, uh, the A. Uh. Oh, sorry, no, not that. O and U. We have these uh, five vowel sounds in Spanish, but we have 18 vowel sounds in English. That means I need a lot of instruction in the sounds that don't exist in my language if you want me to learn to read and pronounce these sounds correctly in the English language and to have access to spelling these words, writing uh, correctly. So there's a lot of information about our 18 vowel sounds that um, I'm hoping I've piqued your interest in giving you some insight into thinking about the language. It is a complex piece to think about. Yes, I do start teaching these vowel sounds right away in the beginning of kindergarten, kindergarten because we are working continuously with these vowel sounds and we're, um, we're tapping, we're mapping words, we're thinking about words that have all these different sounds. You come into kindergarten reading with all these sounds and therefore I have, I want to create that awareness. I'm creating, I'm teaching that awareness of sound. So when I start doing exercises like um, tapping and um, zapping sounds together, I want to, or segmenting and blending, um, I, want, I want my students to be aware of all those sounds in the language before I actually start having them do all the, the various exercises with those sounds when we begin to do phonemic awareness activities. I hope this has given you some insight into um, the, the 18 vowel sounds of the English language. Again, my name is Mary Dahlgren and I am the president of Tools for Reading. Thank you for your time and best of luck as you continue your study of the English language. Bye.